Hi guys, welcome back. Today I will be talking about the story of an hour, a short story by Kate Chopin. I will be covering the plot, the characters, um, symbolism, irony, conflict, theme, and message. So let's start with the plot. In the exposition part, we are introduced to our protagonist, um, Louise Mallard, and it is highlighted that she has a severe heart condition and any sudden plot twist may cause her to have a heart attack and this can kill her. After the exposition, um, we have the rising action. In the rising action, um, Mr. Mallard is reported to die in a train accident and it is Josephine, um, Louise's sister, who is going to tell it to Louise. So, after the rising action, we have the climax. In the climax, um, Mr. Mallard turns out to be um, alive. Um, so his reported death happens to be a mistake. Um, he walks in fully um, alive and completely unaware of the current situation. And the falling action comes right after the climax. And um, finally, we have the resolution. In the resolution, Louise dies because of the sudden shock of seeing her husband alive and of the disappointment. So this was the plot, and now let's take a look at the characters. Um, Mrs. Mallard, she is our protagonist. Um, she has a heart disease, and she's also entrapped between her um, desires and the societal expectations, which are in contrary, uh, which are you know totally different from each other. And she also uh, represents women's roles in the 19th century. Back in those times, women were, women were expected to stay home and take care of the children. They were expected to live for their husbands. But Louise doesn't want to do that. Um, she wants to, you know, live for herself. And she realizes um, this when, you know, she um, hears about the death of her husband. Then we have uh, Brantley Mallard. Um, he is Louise's husband, uh, who was, you know, reported to die in a train accident, but he turns out to be alive. Then we have Richards and Josephine. Richards is Brantley's friend, and Josephine is Louise's sister. We'll talk about them um, uh, in the symbolism part. So now we have symbolism. <laughs> um, Ketchupan uses lots of symbols in the story, but um, I will be talking about just a few of them. So, first of all, we have the heart trap. The word heart here um, represents the core, the root of something. So, the, you know, the fact that um, Mrs. Mallard is afflicted with the heart trouble um, indicates that there is a breakdown, an issue in the fundamental structure of the society, which is marriage. Um, this also represents the... Um, mental and emotional breakdown in Mrs. Mallard's marriage. Then we have Josephine and Richards. They uh, symbolize the common male and female figures. They also symbolize the way society sees widows. Uh, the society sees widows as, you know, a child that should be taken care of. And we can understand this from this part. So Josephine was kneeling before the closed door with her lips to the keyhole, imploring for admission. Louise, open the door. I beg, open the door. You will make yourself ill. What are you doing, Louise? For heaven's sake, open the door. So she's trying to be there for Louise because she feels that um, Louise is, you know, um, desperate and she's so upset that, you know, she feels as if she's going to, you know, make herself ill. But that's not the case. Then we have the open window. Open window is like a gate to Louise's new self-possessed life. Because through that open window, she feels something uh, creeping out of the sky, reaching toward her through the sounds, the scents, the color that filled the air. So um, when she's looking through that window, she realizes the life ahead of her. She sees, you know, suddenly everything comes to life. Her senses, you know, start to work again. She feels as if, you know, she's totally a different person. Then we have the new spring life. The season spring is um, like um, the rebirth of nature. You know, the nature comes to life again after um, a cold and harsh winter. So for Louis, uh, new spring life is like, you know, she's born again. Um, she's like the nature. She's born again after a harsh winter. 
So the time she spent with her husband was like a cold and harsh um, winter for her. And now she's now born again. She has a new life ahead of her. Next, we have the patches of blue sky. Um, so this um, symbolizes the bleak future and the uncertainty of, you know, the future because Mrs. Miller doesn't know what the future will bring to her. So um, this highlights the ambiguity in um, Louise's life because she doesn't know what she's going to do now that, you know, she's all alone. Next, we have the latch key. A latch key is um, it's like a key to uh, the front door. And this represents patriarchy because um, Mr. Mallard has this key. And, you know, he walks in, um, you know, opening the door with the latch key. So in that sense, Louise is limited because um, she only has the key to her own room. She doesn't have the key to, you know, the house, the front door. So, you know, she's not allowed to go out and come back whenever um, she wants, unlike Mr. Mallard. Last but not least, we have the room or the armchair. So Louise's room is um, the only place where she can feel like herself, where she can, you know, um, think and um, feel what she wants to feel. So in that sense, it is quite important. Now that we are done with the symbols, let's move on with the irony. Um, so the first one I will be talking about is the joy that kills. So in the last part, um, it says, when the doctors came, they said she had died of heart disease, of the joy that kills. So the society thinks that Louise died because of the joy of seeing her husband alive, but she died because of the disappointment because um, you know, she created this new self-possessed life in her head. She, you know, thought that she was finally going to do what she wanted to do with her life now that, you know, her husband was gone. But, you know, the fact that he is alive um, just, you know, ruins this um, whole self-possessed life. Next, we have the part, um, you'll make yourself ill. So as Josephine uh, is kneeling before the closed door, she says, you'll make yourself ill. You know, what are you doing, Louise? Open the door. Because the society thinks that uh, Louise is, you know, um, she's, making your, um, she's making herself ill by isolating herself from the rest of the people, by, you know, um, locking herself to her room. But um, she was drinking in a very elixir of life. So she wasn't really, you know, making herself ill. She was just, you know, thinking about what's going to happen in the future for her. And, you know, she um, she was finally at this um, state where she realizes that she is free. Last but not least, we have a um, little whispered word. So I'm going to read the part. First, uh, the lines. So it says, when she abandoned herself, a little whispered word escaped her slightly parted lips. She said it over and over under her breath, free, free, free. So freedom normally is um, something that should be spoken out loud, but Louise cannot do that. She's not allowed to speak out loud about how you know um, liberated she feels because of the patriarchal society. Because the society um, says that, um, you know, the society says you cannot, you know, feel liberated. You should be sad. You should be um, desperate. You should be, you know, devastated. You know, you can't really do anything without um, your husband. That's what the society says. Well, um, in the beginning, Louis feels, you know, sad. Um, you know, she says there was a storm of grief. But, you know, after that, she um, realizes what, what is waiting for her. So this is ironic in that sense. Moving on, we have the conflict. Now there are two different conflicts, internal and external conflict. In internal, the internal conflict, um, we can say the ambivalent feelings of Mrs. Mallard because she is quite unsure about how she should be feeling. You know, um, she is actually, she says, um, she was striving to beat it back with her will. So, so she was striving to beat, um, the freedom back. Uh, so she's quite unsure about how she should be feeling. 
um, ya. Yeah. And we have the external conflict. Uh, this is between the protagonist and the society because um, um, what Lewis is feeling is something against the societal expectations and you know the society's ideas, so they're in conflict. And now we have the themes conveyed in the story. Um, there are lots of themes, but I will be talking about just three of them. The first one is the oppressiveness of women in marriage, because you know um, the death of her husband makes um, Louise realize that um, she is finally free. So this shows that you know she felt oppressed before. She just didn't, you know, she just wasn't aware of this. So this, you know, death made her, you know, aware of it. And then we have the entrapment of women. You know, as I said before, um, Louise is entrapped between her desires and the societal expectations. And as she is representing, um, as she represents the uh, 19th century's, you know, society, like um, women in 19th century. So, um, you know, in general, women are quite entrapped between what they really want to do and what, you know, society tells them what to do or what, you know, they cannot do. And we have societal expectations and suppressed women. So the societal expectations um, oppress women in many different ways because um, you know the society um, forces women to um, just bury what they really want to do, just bury them deep down, their feelings and everything, and they just you know society expects them to just you know take care of the children and you know um, take care of the house and you know live for their husbands so this oppresses women and the message is that life is full of surprises and irony you know because um it's just that in the beginning um it was reported that um mr mallard was that you know so this was a surprise and then it turned out that um it turned out that um he was actually alive so, um, and you know, uh, Louise died because of the disappointment of seeing her husband again. So, you know, uh, and the society thought that, you know, she died because of this, you know, because of uh, the joy and the happiness of seeing Mr. Um, Mallard alive. So this was the, you know, irony. So what we can inform from this is that, you know, life is full of surprise and irony, and you can't really know what's waiting for you in the, you know, um, in the next hour or in, you know, tomorrow or anything. So thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed.